of November, where we will give you the updates of all the latest news. Hello, I'm David Patcher. And I'm Holly Pritchard. Good afternoon. This is Keys News on the 28th of November. I'm Rachel Allison. And I'm Charlie Mulholland. To start the show today, we're going over to our political correspondent, Joe Wilmot. Thank you very much. Now, Donald Trump has lost control of the House of Representatives as it is taken over by the Democrats. That's our top story today. Three branches of US government, you have to remember, legislative, executive and judicial. The government say that more people than ever are in work. But according to the chief officer of the Citizens Advice Bureau, one in 20 people have been claiming to use food banks, including those who are employed. Why do you think there's such a dislike towards the whole situation from students when it's their future that's shaping? Um, I think um, there's often the stereotype that young people are at a board of politics. I think we're slowly um, changing that and that stereotype. Now joining us now via Skype is Arthur Five Stoica, co-host of the York Politics Digest. Uh, now Arthur, what does this? Thank you for joining us today. But what does this mean for President Trump's hold on power? This week, the children's programme Blue Peter celebrated its 60th anniversary with the reunion of some of its former presenters. Our reporters Callum Metcalf and Olivia Davies went down to the event to join in the celebrations and to speak to some of the show's stars. On the 16th of October, 1958, Blue Peter entered our screens. We spoke to Anita West, John Leslie, Helen Skelton and Joel Jeffries about their experiences with presenting the show. Did you ever think Blue Peter was ever going to be as big as this? No, I mean, I, don't, I thought the programme when I went into it was totally original because it didn't talk down to children. That was what I loved from the beginning. So basically I was really happy to be in it. No, but it's, uh, it's a great day, obviously, lovely to see everybody. I'm so glad the programme is still going and so strong and they've made such a big effort today. It's, uh, it's amazing to be part of it. So just really pleased to be here. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson was nice. She was my spirit animal. Yeah, she was nice. Um, I'd say he was nice, Jack Black. Oh, yeah. Enjoy your Good memory. It's like a memory game. When it comes to a chemical attack, would you be prepared we went along training exercises conducted by Manchester's emergency services to try and find out more. A scene that wouldn't look out of place on a film set. Members of the public being put into chemical decontamination suits. But this is merely a training exercise for Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue. See, we've got this, this fantastic facility from Salford University that they've let us utilise today. And what we're trying to replicate is a scenario where we've got some animal rights protesters that have got their information wrong and come to this site thinking it's a testing facility when actually it's a decommissioned area of the university. And the purpose of that is to facilitate and test the response for Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Service to turn out to uh, a Jessup um, scenario uh, to test uh, the contamination of, of people. And the rise, and it's becoming harder than ever to rehome people living on the streets. The well, run by the charity Spin Supporting People in Need, was set up three years ago. I found myself homeless uh, many years ago. Um, for the brief period. Um, I used to queue up at the street kitchens and I used to find it degraded. Um, and I always thought if I ever got the opportunity to give a bit back and help these people, I would do. An art workshop, how can we actually get the homeless people in to experience the workshops and experience the yoga? So that's something we're definitely looking at. As of 2016, Manchester has consistently been one of the top 10 local authorities with the highest number of homelessness applications over the last five years. This year in Manchester, the number of people asking Manchester City Council for help has risen by 155%. I'm in Manchester City Centre to talk to the homeless and get their opinion on the help that they receive from charities. At first, I thought social were just there for the money, but they're not. You know what I mean? The budgets in what they've been given, they are using it to produce. I want to the charities, I would definitely be cold because they've given me blankets to keep me warm, they give me coats to keep me dry. Um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to have a wash now and again. One of these charities is reach out to the community. Welcome to Media City, the home of the stars and journalism here at the University of Salford. You are now watching Keys News. This is a special edition of Keys News for the Global News Relay. 
Whether you're watching in Canada, California, Nanjing or the Netherlands, welcome. We'll be taking you to Bulgaria to see how and why human trafficking still remains a problem in Europe. Исключително принудителни мерки. На нас не ми се побои. Държат се гладни. Don't worry, stay calm. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll also look at why North Africa's migrants are attracted to Europe. Comune, prima o poi affonda. Cioè, il dubbio è non è se affonda o non affonda. Affonderà sicuro. If the government catch me, I will go to Jesus. Well, first, closer to home, we'll be talking about shelter. The Cornerstone Charity in Manchester provides exactly that. In the centre today is Wolf Reeve to tell us more. But hey, it's always interesting here at Keys News. It certainly is. That's all from us now. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Keys News. Goodbye for now. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.